Okay, so what we're going to do is, in this video, is we're going to take this homework assignment and we're going to do it together. That's the point of this video, is to walk you through how to do these questions, which is going to involve drawing a position versus time and a velocity versus time graph. And we're going to do it together. Okay, first thing I want you to do is to have this out, obviously, and have your graph paper out. And keep in mind, you can pause this at any time. So I might have you do something, and it might take you a few minutes longer than it takes me to do it. That's okay. Pause, and you can always rewind as well. And that's the beauty of this thing. Okay? So, um, this is the graph paper that I gave you. I'm projecting it. But I also want you to note that um, I've taken my graph paper. I've turned it sideways. So you should be doing that as well to give yourself more room to go horizontal. Okay? So instead of having your paper like this, you're going to turn it like this. All right. So the first question is telling us to do, you're going to make a position versus time graph and then a velocity versus time graph um, for this statement where you ride your bike at a constant speed uh, away from your house into school. It takes 20 minutes to bike the 10 kilometers. You turn around and bike home at a faster rate, only taking 10 minutes. So we're going to need to make a graph. And we're going to need, on the y-axis, we'll have distance. And on the x-axis, we're going to have time. And we need a total time of 20 plus 10, 30 minutes. Okay? So we're going to take our graph. And like I said, as you make your graph, I can probably do it faster than you. So please feel free to pause, rewind, etc. if I'm going too fast. So... Um, I'm going to come down this way on my graph, and I want to choose a spot someplace around here. And I'm going to do it enough, about right there. So let's see, is that going to be enough? Well, I need to have this be a total of 10 kilometers. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 kilometers. So that works. Oh, I should probably label this as position, which we use a D for, and kilometers is our label. And for our axis going across, we got to go for a total of 30 minutes. So you can use a ruler if you'd like to do this. Again, feel free to pause at any time, because well, it might take you longer to do it. Now, I'm going to go across 30, but I'm not going to label every single one. I'm only going to label a few. So we'll start with zero. I'll just be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty minutes. Almost there. We gotta go to thirty. And that's twenty right there. That was fifteen. So 1, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30 minutes, and that gets me there. So this is time in minutes, okay? So we got next is we got to actually label our points. And like I said, if I'm going too fast, pause it, get yourself caught up, and then hit play again. All right, so now I got to plot these points here. We start here at our house right there at zero meters, zero kilometers, zero seconds. We end up 10 kilometers away at the 20 minute mark. So I find my 20 minute mark, which is here, and I follow that up. I'm gonna plot that point, which looks like it's about right here. Whoops, I can try that again. Okay. Uh, and so now I have to draw that line, and so I'd use a ruler and connect it. I'm going to use my electronic ruler here to connect those two points. Okay. And then we have the way back. It tells us to turn around and takes only 10 minutes, so that gets us to the 30-minute mark. So you would make a mark there at the 30 and connect. Okay. So here's our distance versus time graph. So one thing to note, we're going slower here than here. And of course we can tell it because slope of position versus time graph is our velocity, our speed with direction. 
So here we have a smaller slope than this one, so we're going slower. Also notice this is a negative slope, so a negative velocity, negative direction. And that's important because the next thing we're going to have to do is use these ideas to make a velocity versus time graph for this time. So notice we have two different velocities. So we're going to have to calculate two different slopes. So why don't we go through this, because slope of a velocity versus time graph is the velocity. Hence, we've got a rise. Here's our rise. Here's our run. So we've got a rise of 10 kilometers. We've got a run of 10 seconds. So velocity being distance over time, or that change in position over time. Do it with me. Write this stuff on your paper. I want to see it on your paper. 10 kilometers over 10 seconds. That's going to give us one. I'm sorry, that's not right. Uh, we made a boo-boo, and that's what happens sometimes. So I'll make these mistakes as well. That should be 20. This is one of the things you can talk about. How I know you've watched the video. <laughs> is whether or not you catch my boo-boos, my mistakes. So there's mistake number one. And there's going to be a question about that on the survey at the end. What did I screw up here? How I screwed up and called it 10 seconds instead of 20 minutes. Make note of that. It's going to be in the survey. So that should be 20 minutes. So I've got to fix that. All right. So here we go. We've got 10 kilometers over 20 minutes, and that gets me 0 0.5 kilometers per second, okay? So that's my velocity number one. I've got to do the same thing over here, where I've got my rise, which my rise is not 10, but negative 10 kilometers. Over my run, that's my 10 minutes. So my velocities are change in position, are over change in time. So it's negative 10 kilometers over 10 minutes. And that gets me negative 1 kilometer per a minute. Okay, so make sure you have that as well. Feel free to pause, go through that math. Okay? Now to get our velocity versus time graph for that, I'm going to need a set of axes for that. And you can have a little bit more freedom on this one. It's a little easier to do. Uh, let's go back to the black. Okay, I'm going to start at the same spot. But as I do this, I'm going to leave a spot to go below the axis. I'm going to bring that right across. And I'm going to label these the same way I did before. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. That makes us at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Your grid lines are a little easier to see on your paper. For me, it's harder to project. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. OK, so this is time in minutes. And for our velocity, uh, we've got two velocities. We go up as far as a positive 0.5 and a negative 1. So I'm just going to do maybe every other here. Um, so I'm going to call that and that. So that would be right there. This is, I went every, uh, uh, I made a space there. So that would be 0 0.5, that would be 1. This would be negative 0.5, and that would be negative 1. And this is zero, and this is my velocity in kilometers per a minute. So what we have is a constant velocity. A constant velocity of 0.5, so we need to draw that as a constant velocity. So remember, we keep it always at the same spot. And that happens for 20 minutes. So we have 0.5 for 20 minutes. Then it becomes negative 1, so that's down here, negative 1 for the remainder of the time. Okay? And we can sort of do a little jot throw. So this is the one where we did with the walking grass, how we walk backwards at a constant speed, 
and then we reverse direction the other way. So we have our velocity, our distance versus time, our velocity versus time. Okay? So now that we've got that, pause, go back and forth, do what you got to do. That's the practice, that's the review. The number two, the second one, that's more about accelerated motion. Okay? So um, I'm going to clear this out. It's like I said, you can pause, rewind if you need to see it again. And go ahead and flip your graph paper over, still keep it this way, landscape as it's called, and we'll do number two here, okay? So first thing we gotta do is make our graph, okay? So I'm gonna set up my axes, and I'm gonna make sure since it's a velocity versus time graph, I'm gonna give myself enough room above and below the axis, okay? So let's see, is that enough room? Uh, I think that's enough. So we're going to go as much as positive 10 and negative 10. So why don't we go maybe, um, we'll go up by twos perhaps. So if this was zero, positive two, four, six, eight, positive 10, and then negative two, negative four, negative six, negative eight, negative 10. And I need my axis here, right on the zero part, to go that. So this would be my velocity, and that's in meters per second. And this is going to be my time, which we're doing our time in seconds. So let's go, let's see here. For labeling this, that's our zero point, so that would be one, two, three, four, five. Now that would be one, two, three, four, five to make 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to make 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to make 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to make 25, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to make 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to make 35, and this is time in seconds. Okay. Our car starts from rest and accelerates to positive 10 meters per second in 5 seconds. So we go from here at 0 to 5, which is up here. And I need to draw that. And you can use a ruler. Well, I'm going to do it freehand for the sake of time. You should probably use a straight edge. Then it says travel at a constant velocity of 10 for 5 seconds. So that brings us to 15. I'm sorry, to 10 seconds. Excuse me. Try that in there. So there's our flat line, constant velocity. Slows down to a stop. So that's back to zero. You know what? I could do a little better than that by making straight lines, I think. There we go. A little nicer. Stand still for five seconds. So velocity of zero then accelerates to negative 10. So that brings us here. See, this is our 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 should be here, to 25 at 10. So here's negative 10, 25 is there. One, two, three, four, five, good. Then we go to 30. So I've got this here, one, two, three, four, five. Yep, that's my 30 mark. For five seconds and then so there we are uh, at 30 seconds then we go from that back down to a stop and that puts us right to the 35 mark one more time okay so there we are we speed up from rest we go at a constant velocity we slow down we stay at rest we go in the opposite direction, getting faster, go at a constant speed, slow down to a stop. Okay? Now, how we're going to draw the position versus time graphs, okay? How to draw the position versus time graphs. It's going to be a little tough. I'm going to let you kind of do this in order, okay? Um, we're going to draw seven axes here, okay? One two, three, four, five, 
six, seven. Okay? And I'm going to draw in just, I don't know what order I'm going to draw them in, but I'm going to make it in kind of a, a random sort of array, and I'll let you choose which goes for which segment. Okay? So um, these are all going to be distance versus time. Okay? Distance versus time. So for some of these, we might have something that looks like this. For some of these, we might have something that looks like this. Okay? And some of these might be used more than once. Um, for some of these, we might have something that looks like that, like that, okay? For some of these, we might end up being like this, okay? Um, we might have something that looks like this. We might have something else that um, looks like this. Now, I didn't do these in order of what's going to be there. These are just possibilities, okay? Remember, position versus time, slope is the velocity. So if this is a position versus time, that would be a constant velocity. That would be a zero velocity. This is an increasing slope, so an increasing, et cetera. Notice a negative constant velocity. So you get the idea. I'll let you figure out which ones those go for, okay? Now, for the velocity number, that gets us to um, number four. For the velocity versus time graph above, determine the acceleration for each of the seven segments. Okay? So I'm not going to do all of them. That's for you. But I'll do, just to get us started here, okay? I'm going to do this segment right here, and you can do the others. So remember, acceleration is the slope of the velocity versus time graph. It's the slope. So here, I'm going to pick two points to take my slope off. I'll do these two points right here. So this is at 10 seconds, we're at positive 10 meters per second. Here, at 15 seconds, we're at zero meters per second. So my slope will be the rise over my run. My rise would be a negative 10 meters per second because it's going down. My run would be five seconds. So my acceleration would be change in velocity over change in time. My rise goes down, negative 10 meters per second. My run, 5 seconds, and that gets me negative 2 meters per second per second. Okay? So you're going to do that not just for this segment, but you're going to do it for all of these segments. Okay? Um, rise over run, you're taking the slope. Again, pause it, and when you're done, come back and we'll pick it up, okay? So pause it and finish. All right, so um, that's number three. Um, four, I'll let you answer that on your own. You can look at that. Um, for number five, we're doing the box, right? Where we have D, where we're looking for the distance and the displacement. So we have our box, right? We're looking for the distance and the displacement. We're given during segment F, it's going with a velocity of negative 10 meters per second. Sorry, I didn't give ourselves enough room on that. Hey, that's another mistake I'll ask in the video on the survey. So mistake number one, remember that what, what that was. We can go back to it and find it. Mistake number two, is I didn't give enough room on this box. Okay? So I had to fix it. So there it is. That's proof that you watched it. You put that in the survey. All right. So my velocity is negative 10, and my time is 5 seconds, and the relationship is D equals V times T. So D equals V times T. We've got negative 10, or for just our distance, we would ignore the negative sign and just do 10 meters per second for 5 seconds, and that gets us our 50 meters per second. I'm sorry, 50 meters, because the seconds cancel. So that would be our distance. Our displacement, remember, displacement includes direction, so you just add the negative sign to make it negative 50. Okay? Um, and 6, that's very similar to what we did in class today. Follow the pattern, follow the pattern changes by the same amount, and seven is your survey. Okay? You can pause, rewind, etc. 
but I hope this was helpful. Thank you.